Hi everyone, welcome back. Tomorrow is my partner's birthday, so I'm making him sag paneer, which is one of his favorite dishes. And I'm going to teach you how to make homemade paneer, which is a lot easier than you might think. To make the paneer, we need a half of a gallon of whole milk. Now, when you're making any cheese product, you can't use ultra pasteurized milk because it's simply not going to curdle. So just use pasteurized, or if you're very lucky and can find raw milk, use that instead. So we're just going to pour this into a large saucepan with a thermometer, and then we're going to put this over medium-low heat on the stove and gently bring this up to 200 degrees. Now we need an acid, so I am using lemon juice. You can use vinegar if you like. Both will work the same way, but we need a quarter of a cup. Most hard cheeses use rennet, which is an animal-based product. There are veggie rennets out there, I've used it to make mozzarella, but lemon juice and vinegar do exactly the same thing, and it keeps this dish purely vegetarian. I was lucky that this lemon was juicy enough that it actually gave me exactly a quarter of a cup. Now while your milk is heating up, be sure to go over and give it a little stir every now and then just to ensure nothing is sticking to the bottom. And don't let your milk come to a boil, you just want it at a low simmer. Once it comes up to temperature, it's going to be nice and frothy and steamy. And at this point, we're going to slowly pour in our acid while stirring the milk at the same time. You're going to start noticing curds forming right away, which is exactly what you want. And we're going to cover this up with the lid and let it rest for 10 minutes just so those curds can form a little bit more. Now I have a strainer lined with cheesecloth over a bowl because at this point we have to separate the curds from the whey. So just start ladling that in. Look at those gorgeous curds. I realized a slide spoon would serve me a little better, so I switched over to that. And just continue to separate the curds from the whey into our cheesecloth. Now that all of our solids are in there, we need to remove as much of that liquid as possible. So use a spatula or a wooden spoon because this is still quite warm at this point. Just start pressing your cheese and spin the bag to tighten it up. This is also going to start forming your cheese. Now to season, I'm opening up our cheesecloth and we're just going to sprinkle this with a half of a teaspoon of kosher salt all over the surface before wrapping this back up again and continuously squeezing until we can't squeeze out any more liquid. Now I'm just reshaping this to form it into more of a uniform shape, resting this on a plate, and we're going to layer another plate on top and put some weight on it and press it anywhere between 15 minutes to an hour, depending on the firmness. If you want a soft cheese, just press it for 15 minutes, then drizzle a little honey on it and serve it, some, serve it with some roasted pistachio. That would be really good. I ended up pressing this for an hour, and then after that, storing it in the fridge overnight for firm cheese. So now it's the next day, it's my partner's birthday, and we need to blanch our spinach. So I have one pound of baby spinach that we're blanching over medium heat and boiling water, and this should take only about two minutes, since spinach is tender and fragile to begin with. Once it's all nicely wilted, we're going to remove this to a strainer just so that it can start to drain and cool down so it's not too hot when we go to squeeze out the rest of the liquid later. I also have two tablespoons of dried fenugreek leaves that I'm blanching for a minute as well. Um, you can substitute this with honey mustard, which surprisingly tastes pretty much the same. Now on to the rest of our ingredients. I have one medium onion that I'm just choppity chopping up into a small dice. Two cloves of garlic that we're going to smash and finely mince.
a one inch piece of ginger that we're also going to chop up and finely mince. And now let's check out our paneer. This is perfect. It's super firm. It's exactly the consistency that we need for our dish. Now I'm just chopping this up into small cubes. You can chop it up into whatever size you'd like. I would just like this incorporated throughout the segment here. So I'm chopping this up into a small cube. Give this a little taste and this is perfect. Now let's squeeze as much of the water as we can out of our spinach. Spinach is like a sponge. It likes to hold on to liquid and we don't want a liquidy sag paneer. So squeeze out as much of that water as you can. Look at that color. It's beautiful bright green. And look at all that water that's left over. You can discard that. And we're just going to give this a rough chop a chop. You can do it as finely or as coarsely as you want. like. It's completely up to you. You can use frozen spinach, but I like fresh spinach for this dish. But use whatever you have on hand. Now over medium heat, I'm melting four tablespoons of butter with a splash of olive oil. Ideally, I would use ghee, but I didn't have any in my fridge, so this is what I'm using instead. Now we're going to dump in all of our paneer cubes, and we're going to start browning them on all sides. And once they're brown, we're going to remove them into a dish and set those aside. Then we're going to add in our onions, as well as three slightly crushed cardamom pods. And we're going to saute this for five minutes just until those onions are soft and translucent. Next in we're going to add our ginger and our garlic and let this saute for about 30 seconds just until you start to smell that garlic and ginger. Now I like to toast my spices when I'm cooking Indian food, so I have two tablespoons of cumin, two tablespoons of garam masala, a half of a teaspoon of turmeric, a quarter of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, as well as a half of a teaspoon of salt. And we're just going to let those toast in our hot pan for about a minute until you really start to smell them. This opens up the spices and let those lets those essential oils kind of bloom. Now we're adding in our two tablespoons of fenugreek leaves or two tablespoons of honey mustard if that's what you have. And we're adding in our spinach. Give this a little mix so those spices can coat all of our spinach. Now we're going to add in one and a half cups of coconut, which is one 13 and a half ounce can. Give this a little stir, scraping up anything that is stuck to the bottom of our pan. Just to incorporate all that flavor into our dish. At this point, we're going to add in our paneer cubes. Stir that all in there. And because coconut milk is creamy and sweet, we're adding in a teaspoon and a half of salt, and we're going to let this cook uncovered for 15 minutes over medium low heat. And that's it. Let's start plating. Just simply scoop this into your favorite bowl, being sure to get an ample amount of paneer, 
along with our spinach and our coconut milk. This smells heavenly. Now let's give this a taste. The spinach is fresh and tender. The paneer is a perfect consistency. It's a subtle cheese flavor in there. You get all of those Indian spices and that creamy, creamy coconut milk. This dish is just warming and hearty and delicious and you're not gonna miss the protein, but this is for my partner, so let's go bring it to him. But there it is, sag paneer. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a like. If you loved it, subscribe and hit that notification bell because I put out new videos every Thursday. Until next time, happy cooking and thanks again. What are we doing, Sarah? You making dad's birthday dinner? Don't oh, put your paws on the butcher block. You're very pretty, my lady. Mm -hmm.